Welcome back to Teft Travails everyone. Today I'm going to be firing the greenware that I've been making over the last few months. Um, but first of all what I'm going to do is um, a little bit of glazing. Uh, you may remember there was uh, one piece of uh, pottery that I've already fired. That was this little test piece, a little coil test piece. Um, and I'm going to today make a natural glaze for it um, using some wood ash which I've bought here in this jar uh, and some of the clay um, from uh, from where it was gathered initially to make uh, the pottery. Uh, so this piece has come right back full circle to where it is, where it came from, and uh, I'm going to make some glaze using uh, its own clay and a bit of wood ash and a bit of water. I'll paint that on and fire that with the greenware which is being fired for the first time. Okay, so you can see I've gone for a ratio of about, of about one third of wood ash to two thirds of clay. Um, it looks pretty lumpy, but it won't be uh, once I have given it a good old shake up and put some water in it and uh, turned it into a liquid. Okay, after a little bit of shaking, uh, the consistency of the glaze is like this. Um, frankly, I don't know if that's okay, but um, like with this entire project, it's an experiment and I'm going to try it anyway. Uh, and all I'm going to do is just paint it on. And see where we get to once we fire it. What's interesting is that this is, because it's quite thick, it's filling up some of the gaps, uh, which is something I hadn't considered, uh, but could actually be quite useful. Uh, the, uh, the ash that I used was actually from the barbecue, so uh, yes, it is wood ash, uh, but it um, had become charcoal first, uh, but before that it was obviously wood. Uh, but it also uh, would have contained a little bit of um, uh, good old barbecue flavors and uh, food matter uh, that had gone down and got burned. So we'll see how this turns out. Now the next thing to consider was how to do the firing of the greenware. Uh, and I did quite a bit of research on this and Thanks to a channel called Andy Ward's Ancient Pottery, um, I've set upon the idea of doing a pit firing, which is basically where you dig a big hole, uh, hence this spade, and you put the uh, greenware into the hole on top of a bed of warm coals, having warmed it, and then you pile a fire on top of it. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, but uh, not being a fan of doing unnecessary labour, um, I don't fancy digging a hole for myself, so what I'm going to do is use that spade to pull up this old oak stump because underneath those is usually a uh, ready-made hole and they're usually quite easy to pull up. Um, so I should just have to enlarge that a little bit and make that into the pit kiln. Yeah, you can see that came up really easily and uh, there's the basis of quite a good hole there. So I will just dig that out and bring you back. Okay, so here we have the hole dug and the fire laid. Uh, this only took a few minutes to dig quite honestly and uh, partly it's because uh, when you get a tree stump, uh, the soil around it is pretty loose anyway. Um, so it's, it's easy to start digging. Now that fire I'll light in a little bit, uh, let that burn down to coals, and as that's burning, I'll place the greenware on the rim around the fire, and that should hopefully heat it through so that there's less heat shock and uh, less chance of the pottery breaking. So as you can see, the fire is now lit and the pottery is warming through. I did start it off on the edge, uh, just to gently introduce it to the heat. Uh, now it's moved a little bit closer. Once that is all burned down to ashes, uh, I will place the pottery directly onto uh, those coals and then put on a lot more fuel, uh, thereby gradually introducing the heat to the pots. Um, and I've, I've actually put in there the, uh, the small glazed one as well uh, to see how that comes out. So I'll bring you back when we've piled it all up. 
Okay, so the uh, pottery had a uh, good while to warm, warm up on the edge and at the side of the fire. I've now placed it underneath on directly onto the hot coals and you can see we've got a big uh, fire raging. I'll let that now burn and keep on adding wood to it um, for some hours. The reason I say that is that's how long I did the other piece for and we will see what comes out of it at the other end. Okay, so it's less than a minute since uh, the last clip and we've already encountered problems. You might be able to see down there that large bowl has exploded and a piece of it has landed here. Uh, so I think we might have, uh, oh there's another bit gone, uh, we might have gone a little bit too hot too soon. Let's see if the grogged pottery does any better. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes now and you can see there's... Uh, mixed results to put it mildly uh, quite a few of these pieces have uh, exploded um, but uh, what is quite telling is that the two grogged pieces have not uh, which is that thing there and that pot there uh, that was the uh, intended to be the cup uh, it's got a huge great shard blown out of it that's the already fired glazed piece um, and that is intact uh, but uh, the other things have completely gone Apart from that, that's the slabbed piece, but that's quite thin. So I'll uh, stock up the fire and uh, let the rest of these fire for a bit longer. So we've been burning for about an hour now. Uh, I haven't seen any additional damage, but I've just added the uh, remains of that oak stump uh, just to provide some uh, long lasting heat so that I can go and sit down and have a beer and not watch this the whole time. Okay, it's the next morning and uh, we just let the fire go out naturally and let's see what has survived and what hasn't. Uh, so that was supposed to be the mug um, and you can see that blew up. Uh, yeah, quite catastrophically. This is the mobile phone holder, which was one of the two grogged pieces and that has survived and seems to be in remarkably good shape um, and is uh, quite a nice colour. This is the other grogged piece um, and that also appears to have survived and sounds like it is in one piece as well. Uh, this, that's interesting, so this is the the piece that I made uh, uh, with the slab technique that has survived but it's got a catastrophic crack and a huge chunk has blown out of it as well so that will break but that is a really beautiful colour inside a sort of uh, reddish orangey pink uh, this is the piece I glazed um, and whilst it survived there doesn't seem to be any evidence of glaze on it. Uh, at least not what I would call glaze, so... Uh, yeah. And finally... There's lots of broken stuff in here. Uh, yeah, that was, a piece, that was a piece of thumb-pressed stuff, and that has gone really badly. That's quite catastrophically exploded. Um, there should also be the bowl down here somewhere. On a plate type of thing. I think that was it. Um, that's what's left of it. So we've ended up with two pieces which have survived. And those are both the grogged ones. So I think that teaches us a little lesson there. Now just to uh, wrap up this little project here. Uh, I thought I'd show you uh, what's left after these have been cleaned up. Uh, these uh, these two here are the uh, the, the grogged ones um, and they have stayed together um, adequately I would say uh, this does hold water uh, even though it hasn't been glazed it's very porous still and when you when you pour water into it you can hear um, lots of hissing uh, as air comes out of the, the pottery and the water goes into it um, but it it works um, and uh, yeah I could make that again I reckon uh, this one is the one that's been glazed uh, what well, rudimentary glazed um, it uh, it is slightly less porous than than the other piece um, it holds water uh, but you still get some bubbles coming out of it and you can still hear hissing as the water goes into it 
Um, and uh, this piece here is, is, is uh, worked surprisingly well, uh, given that there are cracks in it from when I folded it over. But again, this was a, a grogged piece, um, and even just the, the natural colour of it is quite attractive. And you can actually use it to hold things. Uh, you could use that as a, a little book holder, or you stick your phone in it or something. And then uh, at the back here, we've got uh, the remains of the... Uh, the, the pots that exploded. Um, I only show these just for completeness, just to show what happened. Uh, but it is notable that the, the color of this really is quite quite attractive in there, um, and with what's left of it. Uh, so you know, that's the end of the project. I'm not going to take these any further, probably. Um, although what I might do, if if there's any appetite for people watching this, um, I might produce some more clay. Uh, this time, incorporating some much finer grog from the very start and see if we can't actually make a, a, a coiled cup that holds together. So if that is something you'd like to see, uh, stick that in the comments. Um, and as always, if you were to uh, subscribe, that would help me also to see what people like and what people don't like. But thank you for joining me and uh, following along this project. And uh, if you want to watch uh, make your own proper uh, own pottery, um, you'll know what not to do.